Hello, this is Akram Jafar, and in this video, I'm going to present some picture tests in practical anatomy of the lower limb. In this video, I will deal with the anterior and medial compartments of the thigh. You may use the video as a revision or as a self-assessment tool. For the purpose of self-assessment, pause the video and spend some time to read the question and come up with the answer. Then replay the video to confirm your answer by listening to the comments and explanations. Identify the structure at the tip of the pointer. Name two of its branches. This structure is located in the femoral triangle. Look at the boundaries of the triangle, adductor longus, sartorius, inguinal ligament. And then the three main structures here, the femoral nerve, femoral artery, and the femoral vein. So this is a branch of the femoral artery. In fact, it rises from its lateral aspect, but as you can see here, that the femoral artery is pushed a little bit to the lateral side. So you can see this branch is the deep femoral artery, profunda femoris artery. And it has one branch at the tip of the pointer here. This is the medial circumflex femoral artery. The profunda femoris has a medial circumflex and a lateral circumflex. The lateral circumflex goes laterally and is a little bit hidden here because it is overcrossed by the femoral artery itself. But here you can see that the medial circumflex femoral artery. In fact, it doesn't go medially, but it goes posteriorly. So it leaves the femoral triangle by passing between pectineus and psoas major muscle. And it divides into two branches, a transverse branch that participates in the formation of the cruciate anastomosis, and an ascending branch that participates in the formation of the trachonteric anastomosis, the main anastomosis that supplies the head of the femur. Identify the numbered structures one and two. This is an um, axial CT at the level of the hip joint. You can see the stabulum, the head of the femur. You can see the pubic symphysis. This is the pectineus muscle. And then we have the psoas major, the iliacus. These are the muscles that are located in the floor of the femoral triangle. And we can see these two structures. One of them is this smaller in size and has a rounded section is located lateral to one this is the femoral artery medial to it is the femoral vein you can see that the vein is a little bit larger than the artery and it's, uh, because of its thin wall it's a little bit squeezed medial to that is an empty space this is the place of the femoral canal which is filled with fat and you might ask about the femoral nerve well the femoral nerve as it crosses the inguinal ligament, it, within one or two centimeters, it divides into a tuft of branches. So it's no more a sizable nerve, but it is a tuft of small branches, muscular branches, and cutaneous branches. So we cannot detect the nerve here as a single nerve lateral to the artery, but its location should be lateral to the artery and might be seen in a higher section than this one. Identify the canal at the tip of the pointer, name the two vessels and the two nerves it contains. This is the thigh, you can see here proximally the external genitalia. This is the sartorius muscle, has been pushed a little bit posteriorly. This is the quadriceps femoris, note the vastus medialis here, which is fleshy down to the knee joint, that's the patella. And the again, the sartorius has been pushed a little bit to reveal the canal that is located underneath the sartorius, called the subsartorial canal or the adductor canal. And this canal is bounded laterally by vastus medialis and posteriorly it is floored by adductor longus and then the adductor magnus muscle and the roof is the sartorius muscle. The canal contains the femoral vessels. Remember the femoral vessels which are located in the femoral triangle, we have the femoral artery which is lateral to the femoral vein. At the apex of the femoral triangle, the artery becomes anterior to the vein, and then they continue down here until they reach an opening in the adductor magnus, which is the floor of the adductor canal. And this is called the hiatus in adductor magnus, where they pass through it to form the popliteal vessels behind the knee joint. So these are the two vessels that are located in the adductor canal. 
the femoral artery and the femoral vein. The two nerves that are present in the canal are branches of the femoral nerve. One of them is the nerve that supplies vastus medialis, so it is nerve to vastus medialis, and the other one is the nerve that arises from the femoral nerve in the femoral triangle but only becomes cutaneous and supplies cutaneous sensation distal to the knee and this is the saphenous nerve. This nerve is going to leave the canal behind sartorius muscle. It doesn't pass into the hiatus and adductor magnus but leaves behind sartorius and becomes cutaneous to the medial aspect of the leg and foot. Identify the foramen. What is the origin of the neurovascular bundle that passes through it? This is an x-ray showing the hip joint. You can see the acetabulum, the head of the femur. This is the superior ramus of the pubis, body of the pubis, inferior ramus, and the ramus of the ischium, ischial tuberosity. All these structures are surrounding the obturator foramen. So the foramen is the obturator foramen. It is closed in life by fascia. And in fact, the name obturator means closed. So it is the closed foramen. Most of it is closed, but only leaves a small part here, a small canal, which is called the obturator canal. Also keep in mind that to this obturator fascia, two muscles are attached. One of them is attached externally, this is the obturator externus muscle, and the other internally, which is called the obturator internus muscle. Now what passes through the obturator canal, which is the small part that is left open, is the obturator neurovascular bundle. So we have the obturator artery and the obturator vein. The obturator artery is a branch of the internal iliac artery, and the obturator vein is a tributary of the internal iliac vein. Both of them they supply the adductor compartment of the thigh the nerve the obturator nerve is a branch of the lumbar plexus l2 3 and 4 same as the root value of the femoral nerve but it arises from anterior divisions of these nerves and it is located medial to the was major muscle in the posterior abdominal wall and leaves the pelvis through this obturator canal it supplies some sensory branches to the peritoneum in the pelvis then it supplies muscular branches to the adductor compartment and has a cutaneous branch which supplies the skin of the medial aspect of the thigh just above the knee joint in addition to the medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh which is a branch of the femoral nerve also keep in mind that the obturator nerve has some articular branches that are supplied to the hip and knee joints identify the nerve a name the plexus from which it is derived this is the femoral triangle showing the inguinal ligament at the base connecting between anterior superior spine and the pubic tubercle. And these are the boundaries of the triangle. Lateral boundary sartorius, medial boundary is the adductor longus muscle. The main structures here are the femoral nerve, femoral artery, and the femoral vein. So this is the femoral nerve. Note that the nerve about one to two centimeter distal to the inguinal ligament breaks up into a tuft of small branches. This nerve is a branch of the lumbar lumbar plexus arises from L2, 3, and 4, posterior divisions, not anterior divisions like the obturator nerve. Identify the structure B. What is the name of the direct superior continuation? So this is the femoral vein and continues superiorly as the external iliac vein, same as the accompanying external iliac artery, which continues distally as the femoral artery distal to the inguinal ligament. Identify the structure at the tip of the pointer, name two muscles between which it is sandwiched. This is the medial side of the thigh. You can see the external genitalia, the inguinal ligament. This should be the sartorius muscle. We can see here that in the femoral triangle, we have the femoral nerve, femoral artery, and the femoral vein has been cut. Now, the medial border of the triangle is, in fact, this muscle, which has been cut and reflected upwards. This is the adductor longus muscle. So when you reflect adductor longus upwards, you can see posterior to it is the adductor brevis muscle. And the nerve that is sandwiched between adductor longus and adductor brevis is the anterior branch of the obturator nerve. The obturator nerve that passes through the obturator canal actually divides into anterior and posterior branches that straddle the adductor brevis muscle. So the anterior branch is sandwiched between brevis and longus, supplying both, as well as, as you can see, the gracilis muscle. And the posterior branch, which is not shown here, is supposed to be posterior to the adductor brevis, sandwiched between it and adductor magnus. And it supplies the adductor portion of adductor magnus muscle. So name the two muscles between which it is sandwiched. These are the adductor longus and adductor brevis. Both of them are supplied by the nerve. 
identify the muscle A, what is its action on the patella. This is a dissection of the front of the thigh. You can see here the sartorius, and this is the adductor compartment medially. And then these are the members of the quadriceps femoris muscle, including the rectus femoris here. So this is the vastus medialis. Note that the vastus medialis is fleshy down to the knee joint. The distal part, fibers are more horizontal, and they are in fact attached to the patella, and they pull the patella medially in order to prevent lateral dislocation of the patella. This is one of the mechanisms that prevent the common lateral dislocation of the patella. Identify the muscle B, to which bone is the muscle attached proximally. Now this is the vastus intermedius muscle. Don't confuse it with the rectus femoris. See, this muscle is closely attached to the bone and cannot be easily reflected from it. The bone is the femur and is located between vastus medialis and vastus lateralis. And it is covered by the rectus femoris muscle here, which has been moved away. So this is the vastus intermedius and it is attached to the femur proximally, not like the rectus femoris. Rectus femoris is the only member of, of the quadriceps femoris that is not attached to the femur. All the vasti are attached to the femur. And then the four members, they share a common insertion. Identify the nerve A, name the plexus from which it is derived. This is a dissection of the front of the thigh. You can see the inguinal ligament. Here's the anterior superior iliac spine. And this is the femoral triangle. You can see the sartorius muscle and adductor longus. So this nerve is located lateral in the thigh, just medial to the anterior superior iliac spine beneath the inguinal ligament, sometimes passes through the inguinal ligament. It is the lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh. This nerve is a branch of the lumbar plexus from L2 and 3, and it supplies cutaneous sensation to the skin on the lateral side of the thigh. It is not the femoral nerve. The femoral nerve, or a branch of the femoral nerve, is located in the femoral triangle. Look at the nerve here. These are tufts of branches. Some of them are muscular branches like these, and some of them are cutaneous like this one. This is the intermediate cutaneous nerve of the thigh. It's a branch of the femoral nerve. Others are muscular branches to supply the muscles of the anterior compartment of the thigh, as well as the saphenous nerve. Identify the muscle B. So the muscle B as has been mentioned, it is the sartorius. It is a slender muscle attached to the anterior superior spine, forms the lateral boundary of the femoral triangle, passes obliquely to the medial side, crosses the adductor longus muscle to form the apex of the femoral triangle. These are the features that I can see here to make me identify the muscle as the sartorius muscle. And so the distal attachment of the muscle, although not shown here, but it is attached to the tibia, to the upper part of the medial aspect of the tibia, distal to the knee joint. Hence, it also acts on the knee as well as its action on the hip. The attachment of the muscle, the sartorius muscle, has a common in attachment with the tendons of two other muscles. These are the gracilis muscle and the semitendinosus muscle. Identify the vein indicated by the blue arrow. What is the corresponding vein in the upper limb? This is the femoral triangle containing the femoral nerve, femoral artery, femoral vein, the van, the femoral van. You can see here that the femoral vein is a deep vein accompanied by the artery, and it receives a superficial vein after it pierces the deep fascia, which is not shown here. And this is the great saphenous vein. This is a superficial vein that drains into the femoral vein. This vein corresponds to the cephalic vein. It corresponds to the cephalic vein in that both of them, they arise from a dorsal venous arch, which is located either on the dorsum of the foot or on the dorsum of the hand, and in that they drain into a deep vein, which is at the root of the limb. So the cephalic vein drains into the axillary vein after piercing the clavipectoral fascia in the axilla, and this one passes through the fascia lata, an opening called saphenous opening in the fascia lata, to drain into the femoral vein at the root of the limb. The other superficial veins, like the small saphenous vein, which corresponds to the basilic vein, they drain into deep veins that are proximal to the root of the limb. So, for example, the small saphenous vein drains into the popliteal vein, while the basilic vein drains into the vena comitans of the brachial artery. However, it should be mentioned that the great saphenous vein is located on the medial side of the lower limb and arises from the medial end of the dorsal venous arch of the foot, passes in the front of the medial malleolus, while its corresponding vein, the cephalic vein, arises from the lateral aspect of the dorsal venous arch in the hand and passes on the lateral aspect of the forearm and the arm. 
but they are they correspond to each other in the fact that both of them are preaxial veins but because of reverse rotation of the upper limb and the lower limb then the preaxial vein in the lower limb becomes on the medial side like the big toe becomes on the medial side and the preaxial side of the upper limb the thumb side of the upper limb becomes on the lateral side identify the nerve indicated by the asterisk what is its root value this is again this is the femoral nerve it's a branch of the lumbar plexus and its root value is l2 3 and 4. Thank you.